Welcome to a video coding challenge where I am going to implement in JavaScript an algorithm uh, known as TFIDF. What does TFIDF stand for? It stands for term frequency, inverse document frequency. Well, what, for, okay, let's think about it. what's term frequency? Well, I just did a previous coding challenge where I look, read in a text and I counted how many times each word appeared. Let's take a look at that. Even though it says TFIDF at the top, ignore that. This is my previous example running. The happened, uh, occurred in this text 16 times, A, eight times of seven. This, by the way, excuse me, is term frequency. How frequent was the term in that document? So what's this IDF part and why do we need it? Well, let's think about it. This is all of the word frequencies of all of the words in the Wikipedia article about rainbows. It's an edited, a shorter version of that article. You can see the word counts aren't very high. What if what I wanted to do was extract or automatically through some algorithm determine key words associated with this article? Well, the first way I could think to do that would be, hmm, the words that appear most frequent, frequently, those must be important words for this article. So I know what the key words are. They're the, a, of, in, and, and. Oh, and by. You can see why this is a problem. Those are sort of meaningless words. Now, they're quite meaningful in text analysis. If you look at James Pennebaker's research, check the description for a link to book Secret Life of Pronouns. That's another topic. I'll come back to that another time. But in, for what I'm doing, trying to get key word extraction, those are not meaningful words. Rainbow, however, is a meaningful word. Now, if you think about it, uh, if I were to look at, you know, unicorn is probably a bad example, but if I were look, to look at the Wikipedia page for mango or for blueberry, I probably wouldn't find the word rainbow in it that often. So while I would find the words the, a, of, and in. So words that might appear frequently in one document, but not frequently amongst a corpus of other documents might be unique or important to that particular document. And that's what IDF is. It's inverse document frequency, meaning Term frequency inverse document frequency, meaning a word's score equals the term frequency, let's say it appears 100 times, multiplied by inverse document frequency, meaning the more frequent it is in other documents, the lower the score should be. So how do we calculate that? Well, I could say, let's say it appears in 10 documents, I could just say one divided by 10 instead of 10. So one divided by the number of documents it appears in. And you can see if it's only in one document, right? I'm gonna get a score of 100 or I'm going to get a score of 10. So actually in the technical definition of TFIDF, the number one doesn't go here, but actually the total number of documents. So let's say we're actually examining uh, um, the corpus is 50 documents. Uh, then you could see here that, you know, we're kind of going to get similar. This, this is mostly equivalent score relative, but this is the technical um, definition. So 100 times the number of documents divided by the number of documents it appeared in. So this, now I would get a score of uh, 500. And here I would get a score of 5,000. Now. This is also not exactly, if you look up, if you keep reading that Wikipedia page, the technical s definition of the score of TFIDF. There's one step more here, which is that this is perhaps weighting it way too strongly. In order to reduce the effect that the document count has on the score, logarithmic scale is applied. So the log function is applied. So you could play around with this formula and be creative and come up with your own twist on what you're actually looking for. But under the technical definition under Wiki uh, on Wikipedia, you'll see that the, the log function is applied. Now, why is that applied? So how, and how does logarithmic scale work? Um, I'm gonna, in this video, in the description, link you to a, a really great Khan Academy video that describes logarithmic scale in detail, or maybe I'll come back and make my own video about that. But I'm gonna move on and just have you understand it as a way of changing the, of reducing the effect that the document frequency has and um, which can overwhelm the score um, if you don't apply this logarithmic scale. Okay, so this is the idea of term frequency inverse document frequency. Instead of, now what I wanna do is have a program that doesn't just show me the counts of each word, but shows me this TFIDF score. 
So the question for you is like, well, what are you, why are you using this and what's your corpus? So you might think about, well, let me look at, you know, every single newspaper, uh, pick a newspaper and every, uh, have a huge corpus of all newspaper articles or a Wikipedia article and all Wikipedia articles. You kind of, you want a big data set to be able to have this produce meaningful values. I'm going to demonstrate this to you with a small data set and we'll get something that works, but obviously it'll be, a, you know, a little bit flawed based on the small data set. Let me just show you the data set really quickly. So I'm, this is the previous word counting example running verbatim, but I'm going to alter the code and instead what I'm going to use is here under files, I'm going to use these particular, um, these, uh, these text files and these are just text files that are uh, short paragraphs from Wikipedia like the fish, a fish article, fade key, I don't know where I got this, rainbow.txt, sports.txt, test, um, <laughs> and tree.txt. So I'm just going to pick, I'm just going to use tree, sports, rainbow, and fish. Okay? So what I want to add in my, um, sorry, what I want to add in this particular example, I'm going to go back to the code, is I want to create a, an array of files, eclipse.txt, uh, fish, fish.txt, uh, rainbow.txt, and, um, and actually, I'm going to do this in sort of a silly way. I know I'm going to, no, rainbow.txt, I'm going to do that. And um, what was one of the other ones? Uh, let's try sports.txt. I don't know why I picked these. Some, at one point, I picked these. Okay? So, <coughs> um, so these are the files that I'm going to use. So I can't just load only these files. I need to load all of them. So how do I do that? Ugh. I want this to be an array. I want that raw text to be an array. And I'm going to preload all of them. So I'm going to say for var i equals zero, i is less than files.length, i plus plus. I'm going to say uh, text index i equals load strings, files, and then plus the files index Oops, plus, no quotes there, files index i. So this is me now loading all of those files into an array. And then what I want to do here is, again, all words. I need all words not to be a single document. I'm loading a bunch of documents. And I'm, by the way, I'm doing this in quick and dirty fashion to demonstrate TF-IDF. If I were really building this out, and I'll show you a different example, I have to be a bit more thoughtful about how I'm loading all these files and maybe thinking of a more uh, sophisticated data structure to keep track of all this data, but this will work for now. So I want to, this is a good first pass, I think. So I want to loop through all of the things I loaded, and I want to create an all words array and say all words index i join. Okay? So that's good enough for right now. Because what I want to do is I want to pick, what I'm going to do arbitrarily is I'm going to say, and let's, let's use rainbow. I'm going to put rainbow first. I'm just going to do the TFIDF score for the first article as compared to all the articles. Again, you would want a much larger data set. You probably want to have many articles with longer text in them. And you might want to build something which allows you to click on different articles and compare that one to all of them. But I'm going to make a simple introduction to this idea by comparing the first article to all the other articles. So now, let's just make sure my term frequency is working. So instead of splitting all words, I want to split all words index 0. And I want to uh, still count and count all of those and, and visualize that count. So everything should work now where I, whoa, something went a little goofy here. Because why did I get such higher, yeah, I'm, and I'm getting words from others. So let's see, what did I miss here? Oh, ah, there we go, I see the problem. This should say txt index i, right? I don't want, I joined all the words from all the articles, which I don't want to do. I need to still have some way of distinguishing between articles. If I was just doing a concordance across all of them, that would be fine, but I need to keep that, dis that distinction. So let me make sure, and let me just make, this a global variable for make debugging a little bit easier, even though I don't necessarily need to. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, so that I, I can make this an array. 
and get rid of this here. So let me run this again. We can see here's the raw data from the files. And here is that array. Now we can see, uh, yep, we can see, uh, uh, hold on, all, all words, I still think I might have a mistake in here, dot length. Nope, four, we're five. All words index zero is rainbow. All words index one is eclipse. Okay, so you can see these are short, so this is good. I now have all those articles in an array of strings. And you can see here, here are the counts for the rainbow article. Again, these numbers are really small, so my results aren't going to be so great, but let's see how it goes. So here's the big difference. This is an incredibly important point here. In my previous videos about word counting, we created an associative array. Each here, it was using a JavaScript object. The JavaScript object would have a word like rainbow, associated with a count, like 10. This is no longer going to be good enough because what I want to have now associated with rainbow is two values, the term frequency and the document frequency. I need the term frequency and the document frequency. So how do I do that? If a JavaScript ob object has a word associated with a value, how can I have a word, so a string, associated with two values? Well, this is actually quite native to how JavaScript works. There's a bunch of ways I could do this. For example, I could have the key be rainbow and the value be an array with two numbers in it. And this might be actually a nice way of doing it, but I'm going to do it uh, in a little bit of a goofier way, which I think will build. Uh, later I want to do Bayesian text analysis, Bayesian text classification. And we're going to need to be a bit more thoughtful about this because we're going to need a lot of numbers with each word. So what I'm going to do actually is associate an entire other object with each word. So rainbow is the key and the value is term frequency 100 and document frequency you know, 1. So I'm going to have the key be a reference to an object an, it itself with two values in it. So this is going to be really useful for later text analysis operations where you might want to have a lot of metadata. I mean, what if I wanted to have Rainbow's definition or a, you know, a link to the word Nick page that I, that, so say, you know, that I could have a lot of metadata associated with each word if I were to build out this object. Okay. So here we come back. So I want to modify the way that this works, right? Whenever I encounter a new word, I want to actually not just set the value to 1, but I want to create an object with a term frequency, a term frequency of 1, and a document frequency of, well, let's not do the document frequency yet, I think. So I want to put it in it. I want to, uh, I mean, the document frequency is going to go in there, but I want to make an object with term frequency of one. Okay. So this program now this will that now this will fail because <laughs> it the, the count is no longer in there. You can see there's this object here. So what I need to do if I want to visualize this again is say counts index key dot tf because those numbers are now in the object associated with that word in the variable tf. Oh, undefined. Interesting. Oh, why is that? Well, here we go, because I need to increase the term frequency here, right? Not just increase the value by one. Okay, so now, now we're back to where we started. Ah, sorting is also broken, because I'm comparing the term frequencies. And you can see, now we're back to where we started. So now I have an object, and what I can actually do is figure out document frequency now. Okay, so let's add that in. So what I want to do, and let's actually, let's count it, you know what, um, hmm, I, there's like a bunch of different ways we could do this, so I'm trying to think what makes the most sense. I'm gonna leave it as is. And what I'm gonna do now is say, okay, once I'm done with the term frequency, I need to look at every single word and count how many times it appears in other documents. Okay, let's figure this out. Oh, this is going to be, we could do this. Oh, this is hard. This is hard. So I know that I need to loop through all of the keys. So let's first loop through all of the keys, right? I, uh, let's, I don't need to worry about sorting. I'm going to loop through all of the keys. So my word is keys index i. 
So now what I need to do is loop through all of the files. Ooh. Uh, all t uh, uh, I'm going to say all txt equals all words dot length. Whoops. Ah. I, a j. A j equals 0. j is less than all words dot length. Right? All words is the array. I need to, for every word, I need to look at all the other documents and see if it's in there. So I just need to, I don't even need to do the counts. I just need to know, does it even appear in that document? I could do the counts for like, how often does it appear in those other documents, but I'm gonna do it in a simpler way. Okay, so for each one of those, what do I need to do? I wanna check, um, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's do this a different way. No, this'll work. Uh, OK, this will work. So I need to do like a mini little concordance right here for all of those. So I'm going to just say uh, temp, temp counts uh, uh, equals an empty object. <laughs> OK? Then I want to split up. And well, how did I split before? What regular expression did I use? This. All words index i. I want to split it up into tokens. Oh my god, do I really have another loop here? Uh, var k equals zero. I, I might, I'm sure there's like a, uh, a way to simplify this um, that is unnecessary. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, there's a, I'm going to be able to make this more efficient, but I'm going to keep going with this. I don't think I need the outer loop. I'm thinking about this, but let's keep going. k is less than uh, tokens.length. OK, I want to go through all of the tokens. And if uh, temp counts uh, tokens index i is undefined, yeah, I just want to do, uh, there's a better way to do this. I can already think of it. Ah. I'm, I'm running out of space here. Why is it word wrapping me? I don't like that. Um, if temp counts tokens i is undefined, <laughs> then I want to uh, just give it a value of one. Like it exists. It's in that document. So I want to get a unique list of all the words in that document. And once I've done that, I can just say, if temp counts word exists equals one, then word dot document frequency plus plus. And by the way, here I should give it a document frequency of zero. So I'm not going to count this particular uh, instance as a dot document frequency because I happen to be checking the same document again. Let's let's be let's be better about this. Let's start this as one. So. I give it a, it's in this document, and then I'm going to only go through, I'm going to skip that first one in the array, so there's less computation here. So then I can, uh, and uh, let's, let's make a word uh, variable, tokens index i, because this will make the code more readable. Uh, uh, and that way, okay. so. And uh, this is wrong. This would be counts in index word dot df plus plus. Whoa, OK. I kind of wrote all this out. I probably made some mistakes. I think I could, I should just, I'm doing the concordance every single time for every word, which is ridiculous. I should do the concordance for the other documents once and then check all the words. But I'm going to fix that in a moment. But let's even just see if this works. This is what happens when you program. You're kind of a mess and it's just sort of like <laughs> you're trying to figure it out. So let's just read this through again. For every single word in the article that I'm trying to find the keywords for, I want to look at all the other articles and quickly do a quick concordance by looking at all those words. And then once I've done that quick concordance, I want to see if it's in there. If it was in there, I would increase its document frequency by one. And once I'm done with that, let's run this program. OK, I have an error, sketch.js line 35. Uh, ooh, um, no wonder. i equals 0. i is less than keys.length. 
Okay. Look, this is taking a very long time. <laughs> I probably have an infinite loop somewhere in this code. I probably have locked up the browser, right? Can I scroll? Can I select anything? No. So I need to kill this page. Uh, I'm going to close this page and go back and look. So let's, let's debug this together. Uh, ah, this should be K, by the way. Uh, because I'm looking at all the tokens. Uh, and where could the loop have gone wrong? Ah, here we go. That should be, that needs to be a less than. I had equals, I had an infinite loop stuck in there. So can I kill this page? Uh, okay, let's come back, run this again. Oh, still got a problem. Let's look at this some more. Infinite loop anywhere? Okay, I'm back. I think there was actually a caching issue when I had that infinite loop. Um, so I, I've now, I just restarted the, the web server that I'm running, and so I now have this running again, but I still don't know if I fixed the problem. Ah, okay. Cannot read property split of undefined, line 40. Uh, why don't I have undefined, why is, uh, uh, why is that, oh, J, this should be J. That's really important. That has to be J, it's part of that loop. Caught that. Okay, things are still good. And now this is where I'm doing the quick little concordance. Things are still working. I don't know what went wrong there, but I think I just had the infinite loop. And the infinite loop, the browser couldn't like not get out of the cache of that or whatever. So let me look at counts now. And we can see, look at this. A is in one document with a term frequency of 8. Above is in one document with a term frequency of 1. Now this doesn't really seem right to me. I expect that I should have some document frequencies of more than one. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out if the document frequency isn't working properly. So one thing is I should definitely add this to lowercase thing. Let's see if that helps. Um, and I'm going to uh, say counts again. And you know, A, we should definitely, A should be in more than one document. And just to be sure about that, um, let's go to the files. Eclipse, uh, and I'm going to add A, A, A. Just to be sure about that, I'm going to add a couple instances of A, just in case it, it wasn't. Uh, and I'm going to refresh this, and I'm going to look at the counts, and I'm going to go to A, and the document frequency is still 1. So there is a mistake here. Let's see if we can figure out what I did wrong in the actual code. Uh, so now I'm going back to sketch.js. So let's look at... Um, Let's look at all these temp counts. So as I run this, let's look at all these little mini hash tables I created for each other document. One true, two true, one true, two. So this, this looks right. A is true. So I'm definitely getting, uh, why did I put, the value is true. Oh, I said true, and then I checked if it's equal to one. <laughs> So that has to match, of course. I want to know, I, I put true to keep track of it's in the document, and so I can just check if that evaluates to true or false. So that, that's clearly the problem. Uh, and I can, I can uh, take out this console.log, and I can uh, look at the counts again, and I can now say, A, <laughs> document frequency is still 1. Okay, so that doesn't seem like it makes sense. Oh boy, I see the problem now. <laughs> it's very obvious, which is that I used word to keep track of the word that I'm currently trying to determine the document frequency. And then later in the inner loop, I kind of like, ah, I made a different word variable. And in JavaScript, you can't really have these like local variables. They clash. Um, everything, uh, this, was, this is a total mess. I can't have declare a new variable in a sort of like local or more local scope than, the, than another variable with the same name. So actually, I think I just want to get rid of the use of, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call this W. That'll solve this problem. So I'm just gonna use W down here so that when I'm down here, I'm, I'm referring to the correct word. Now, come on everybody, are you with me? Let's look at the counts. And let's look at A. And we've got, ah, uh, document frequency is four. This is excellent news. So now we have term frequency being calculated and document frequency being calculated. Now let's, let's make an improvement here. I, I, this is really, uh, I hate to make this video any longer than it is, 
but this is really bothering me that I have, I'm redoing the concordance of all those documents for every word, which is pretty much ridiculous, if I don't say so myself. So I'm going to uh, take this out, this, this loop out. I'm going to do it once in advance. Right? I want to look through all the other files. Um, I'm going to say other, fi other counts is an array right, of all the other counts. I'm going to create this temporary counts dictionary. And then when I'm done creating that temporary counts dictionary, I'm going to put it in other counts. OK? So now I've done it just once. I have a nice array of all of, the, all of the dictionaries, all the unique words in the other documents. So now, when I go through this list of keys, I, don't have to re I still have to look at all the other concordances. Uh, other counts.length, but I don't have to redo each one, which was kind of absurd. And I can say now, I hope I can say now uh, temp counts equals other counts index j. So now for every word, I can see if it's in the other one. So I'm just doing all of these concordances once and then checking them here. So hopefully that fixes this still works up. Oh, I got a line 77 syntax error, which is, oh, an extra, I, I'm out of. I did too many brackets. Yeah, I, clo I did too many brackets. And now let's look at counts. And let's hope that I'm still seeing the right, yes. So I just made this enormously more efficient, which is a really good thing, thankfully. OK, now we can actually, now we can actually do the, um, the TF-IDF score. So the next thing I can do is once again look at all the keys. And I can calculate the score. So how do I do that? I can say. Um, for I can say give me my um, uh, I can say give me the um, tf the the word object I'm trying to think of give, I'm just going to say value is uh, counts and this should really be tf I I should change this variable name from counts counts word actually I'm just going to uh, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this is so hard to think of good variable names on the fly. But val is like the worst, right? So I'm just going to say word op, word data. That's not much better, but the word data is all this stuff. The term frequency, term frequency and document frequency. That's what's in there right now. So now term frequency inverse document frequency equals term frequency document frequency dot tf, right? I want the term frequency from that object times, I need to make it inverse. So what are the total number of files? I want to say files.length divided by term the document frequency. Now, by definition, I, this would be a problem if I could have a document frequency of 0, but I started all document frequencies at 1. So I, this shouldn't be a problem. So I can put this in parentheses and then take the logarithm of that. And I've done the formula. And then I can say, oh, why is my? Text wrapping, I don't like that. And then I can say tfdf, tfidf equals that score. And really what I want to do is just this. I want to put the score in that object. And I don't like the name of this variable. I'm just going to call it word object because it stores all the stuff. Even though it makes me lose my wraps that line again. So here we go. I want the uh, TFIDF score. The TFIDF score is the term frequency times the logarithm of the total files divided by the, wor the, the document frequency. And now, what do I need to do? I can just go back down here and say, hey, guess what? Remember when I sorted that array? I don't want to sort by the term frequency. I want to sort, sort by that inverse document frequency score. And I want to display that uh, TFIDF score. And let's see what happens with uh, rainbows.txt. If I run this, you can see, look at this, perfect. Arc, 
rainbow light caused. So we're getting higher numbers for words that are associated with rainbow. And a little hack that I can do just to test something else is I can, you know, let's try sports.txt instead. If whatever I put first in this array will be checked or conduct unsportsmanlike games such. So again, I'm not getting or is a bit of an anomaly here because I have such a small data set. So or appears very frequently here. But if I had a larger data set, I would get more accurate results. Okay, so what can you do with this? This is a bit of a mess of a video, but I have now working code. Hopefully you learned something or you got something out of it. A couple things I'll mention. One is I have a more thoughtfully designed example, which again, I'll link to in this video, but you can find on the A to Z website where if I go here, I can actually drag a whole bunch of files in, drag and drop them, and it'll do TFIDF for all of them. You can see what it does is it actually makes a bunch of clickable links. So, you know, I could click on, let's say if I click on fish.txt, I can see now I'm getting, um, I think it's like, I don't know why, the, the <laughs> weird, let's look at test.txt or rainbow.txt. We got, we got the same results. Ah, uh, so I did something different with the math formula. <laughs> I have to examine that. But um, you can see I'm getting basically the same results. So you can look at this example if you want a more thoughtfully put together example that allows you to try a bunch of different files and drag and drop them. But ultimately I would say to you is, number one, what's your corpus of text? What's a unique and interesting corpus of text that's meaningful to you that you might want to try? And number two is how might you present these results in a more creative fashion? You know, what happens if you did this to all of your emails? Certain emails, one email versus all of your other emails. That's a corpus. Or, and how might you visualize that information with color, with shapes, with drawing, or simply in some interactive way to allow a user to play around with this idea? So if you make anything, try anything, uh, let me know, and I would love, uh, uh, love, to, love to see it. So write in the comments or uh, share with me on Twitter at Schiffman, and uh, see you soon. Thank you.